Welcome back to Trigonometry at Dallas College. This is Professor Bailey, and today we're looking at Chapter 3.2, Applications of Radian Measure. What we're going to do is figure out how to calculate the arc length on a circle, um, and then also the area of a sector of a circle. Um, so a couple new formulas to add, and a couple great applications from trigonometry. So the arc length um, is the length along the edge of the circle um, intercepted on a circle of radius r by a central angle of measure thadian, theta radian, excuse me, thadian, sorry. And it's given by the product of the, ra of the radius and the measure of the angle. So we can see here arc length equals radius times theta or the radius times the angle, and remember this is in this is also in radians. So what you're thinking here is this the little sector piece um, is like a little uh, slice of pizza, and um, if we have theta radians as our angle measure, um, and our radius is r, then our our length of our circle that's kind of this outer edge of this um, angle, kind of like a pizza slice, it's like the crust of the pizza, then we can find that length of that crust of the pizza or the arc length um, by using the formula arc length equals radius times the angle. Okay, and again, um, for this formula to work, we have to use radians, not degrees. Let's look at an example. A circle has a radius of 18.2 centimeters. Um, find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle with measure 3 pi over 8. Okay, so you've got the formula right here. It's pretty straightforward. Hit the pause button and do this calculation. So we have arc length equals radius times theta. Uh, the radius is 18.2. Uh, the angle is already in radian, so it's 3 pi over 8 and we simply do the multiplication, and that arc length is approximately 21.44 centimeters. Pretty straightforward, um, et cetera. So let's try another one. Here, notice that the angle is in degrees, so you're gonna have to do a little upfront work first. So again, hit the pause button. I think you can do this. This is not very difficult, and it just builds on our last chapter. So first, we need to convert our angle from degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, and we get 4 pi over 5 radians. Then we use our arc length formula. Arc length equals radius times the angle. And so we 18.20, um, which is the radius given in the problem, times 4 pi over 5. And this arc length, this crust of this pizza is 45.74 centimeters approximately. Okay? So let's look at an interesting application of this. The, the, you know, the Earth is measured in latitude and longitude. And latitude gives the measure of a central angle with the vertex at the Earth's center, whose initial side goes through the equator, kind of like the x-axis, and whose terminal side goes through any specific given location. For example, uh, if we look at Reno, Nevada, which is approximately due north of Los Angeles, the latitude of Reno is 40 degrees north, and that of Los Angeles is 34 degrees is 34 degrees north. The n in 34 and 40 means that it's north of the equator. So these are all measured either in north or south of the equator. Okay, and um, the radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. So we've got a radius and we've got an angle. But look at the question: Find the north-south distance between the two cities. Ooh. Well, it helps if we can kind of picture things, and, and drawing and trigonometry is very important. And so here we can see that the degree of, um, that Reno is at 40 degrees north latitude, and Los Angeles is at 34 degrees um, north latitude. And we can see that the distance between the two cities is roughly going to be equivalent to that arc length, the arc length between them. So we need the angle of this measure, which notice is pretty simple to find. So see if you can solve this problem. It's an arc length problem. 
you're trying to find the arc length between Los Angeles and Reno. Hit pause and do your work. See if you can get it. So notice that that little angle, unfortunately, I wish I didn't have it in my drawing, is simply the difference between um, Reno's la um, latitude and Los Angeles latitude. 40 minus 34 degrees is 6 degrees. Of course, we have to first convert this to radians, and we get pi over 30 radians, and then we use this in our arc uh, length formula. Arc length equals radius times the angle, so it's simply 6400 times pi over 30, and we get roughly 670 kilometers, which is interesting because you think in America we would use miles, not kilometers. So I wonder if a British person wrote our book. So the north-south distance between Reno and Los Angeles is about 670 kilometers. Interesting problem, interesting way of finding um, some distance between places um, that are on the same north-south line. Let's look at another problem now. A rope is being wound around a drum with radius of 0 0.8725 feet. How much rope will be wound around the drum if the drum is rotated through an angle of 39.72 degrees? This picture is great because it's, it's quite easy to see that if we start here and we move, you know, we rotate the drum, 39.72 degrees, all we're talking about is, again, the arc length. Very simple problem. Um, we were given the radius, we're given the angle of rotation, so, and we are even given the formula here. So you should be able to do this one pretty straightforward. The, um, and that's just what I said a minute ago. So we use um, the arc length equals r theta with the angle converted to a radian measure. Notice I didn't even put pause here because this one's so simple. Here we have the radius. Here we have the angle in degrees times pi over 180 to give us radians. And here we get our approximate measure, which is 0.6 feet. Okay. Let's look at a different example. Ooh. Two gears are adjusted so that the smaller gear drives the larger one. If the smaller gear rotates through an angle of 225 degrees, through how many degrees will the larger gear rotate? I know what you're thinking. What the? <laughs> so let's th think about this. They gave us the arc length formula again. So we know that the angle of this one, this one's going to go around faster because it's smaller, and this guy's going to go around um, it's going to make a rotation in, a, in a, a slower way. But notice that the arc length created by the rotation of the smaller gear, because those gears are matched, whatever arc length is here is going to be equal to the arc length of the larger gear. So all we have to do really is figure out we know the radius of the smaller gear, we know how much it rotates, so we can figure out the smaller gear's arc length. We can then use that because um, that's the same arc length as the larger gear, we have the radius, and then we can just adjust the formula to find that out. I know it seems hard and confusing, but notice as the small gear rotates, the arc lengths are the same. So let's see if you can do this problem. First, find the arc length of the small gear, then use this to find the angle of rotation of the large gear. Again, hit pause and see if you can come up with the answer on your own. I know you may be out there being lazy and never hitting pause, but I promise you, if you do, you're going to remember more because you're moving, you're writing things down on paper, you're actually doing the problem instead of just passively watching someone else do the problem. And that makes a huge difference in terms of recall and mastery. Okay, so first we need to convert our um, degrees to radians of the smaller gear. And then we need to figure out the arc length. And we get um, the radius times theta gives us 25 pi over 8 centimeters. Now we're going to use the same arc length in the formula for the larger gear, 25 pi over 8. So now we set the arc length for the larger gear to 25 pi over 8. 
the radius is 4.8 centimeters times theta. So we divide both sides by 4.8 and we get the angle equals 125 pi over 192. Now, since we were given the original angle rotation in degrees, we need to convert this back to degrees and that's not very difficult. And we get approximately 117 degrees, okay? It seemed like a really challenging problem. It actually was, if you understood that the arc lengths would be the same, it really wasn't that complex after all, but it did take a few iterations to go through that problem. The last thing we're gonna learn today is something called the area of a sector of a circle. And um, as it says here, think of it as a piece of pie. <clears throat> so the sector of a circle is the portion of the interior of the circle, it's your pizza slice, that's created by the angle theta of radius r and that arc length that we've been looking at, okay? And you can see it here shaded. The area of a sector of a circle of radius r with a central angle theta is given by the following for formula. Area equals one half radius squared um, theta, and that's theta, of course, is in radians once again. As in the formula for arc length, the value of theta must be in radian mode when this formula is used. So let's look at an example here. A center pivot irrigation system, this is, you know, some kind of sprinkler, provides water to a sector-shaped field with the measures shown in the figure. Find the area of the field. This is really simple, um, so I think you can pause and do this pretty quickly. Remember, area equals one-half r squared theta. Here we have the degree in, uh, excuse me, here we have the angle in degrees, so we have to convert to radians. And then we simply use the formula, area equals one-half r squared theta, and we plug in the values, and we get approximately 13,500 square meters. Again, I'm beginning to think that these are all British problems, because we don't do so.